Now let's just keep modeling stuff and eventually our building will start to come together. If I go here and let me go over snaps again real quick so we make sure we're doing the right thing. We want to be on two and a half snap. 3D snap will snap literally to this point so you can watch it'll snap to those points in the X Y and Z axis the problem with that is we oftentimes have things that aren't on the same plane like for example this upper wall is going to be on a different plane than this one so it'll get us all messed up we'll have things going back at an angle away from us or towards us I and mean, it'll look flat in the front view then when we go tumble around everything looks messed up so two and a half snap is what we want when we're drafting in orthographic views like this in a, in a straight on front view or straight on side view because it will it will draw at the same plane always so watch it'll snap to us in this front view it'll snap to this other wall that we've got already which is good also if you hold down shift as you're dragging this way you can if you hold down shift it'll go straight and, st and still snap here so see it's snapping to this distance in the X but it's ignoring the Y if you hold down shift so no matter what direction you go in the Y it's only going in the X but it'll snap to that endpoint right there and then you can come down just like that let's put in another door here we're gonna have to go in and clean this up because my sketch is so bad but that's okay now because it was in two and a half snap it's always drawing on this plane back here which is okay we that's better than getting it all messed up in three dimensions so now we just have to worry about moving it into place in the top view we know it's on the same plane as that other wall so now we're good to go one thing we need to do here and this is probably wouldn't have if we're using CAD but since I'm using a sketch then we'll have to do these kind of things we need all these door heights to be the same right no okay so those door heights and let's make sure that they're kind of the right size they might be a little big so a door would be about well a double door would be six feet by we'll say eight feet there'll be big doors here so let's let's make a rectangle that's about that size and we'll use that as reference in here so because my sketch wasn't nicely drafted out or anything like that then we have to go back and kind of make sure our dimensions are right so my door wasn't too far off and again we're just going into sub object mode here let's make sure everything lines up where we want okay one handy thing that I keep doing that I haven't mentioned when you're moving vertices around one thing that really helps is to lock your selection and the hotkey for that is spacebar if you, and you'll see this little lock highlight down here and because the hotkey is spacebar it's very easy to turn on and off so I like to whenever I make my selection for what to move I just lock it so that now wherever I click it's only going to move that that can be a helpful because some, sometimes you have vertices that are really close to each other so you go and try to to move it and you accidentally select a different one and start moving that one instead so it's e sometimes easier to just lock it unlock it lock it unlock it when you're moving it around so lock move unlock 
like that. So let's take these, lock them in, move them that way. Now here, this is a good opportunity to show you some other spline tools. Let's go into the sub-object mode of segment and just delete these ones, like that. And remember this door over here is the one we set up correctly, so let's select that one, take these segments, remember to hold down shift to move it along the x-axis, like that, and we'll put, put one there, and put one there. And let's select the whole spline. We want to detach those from this wall over here. Detach is another tool in here. Detach makes it its own object. So now this object and this object and this object are all separate things. So if we go here, this is pretty cool. If we go here, we can go even though this is already extruded into a solid object, we can go down to the Edit Spline. We can go into the Spline Tools, one of which is Attach. Uh, we actually want to be in... Well, no, this is fine. Attach. And we can attach this guy here. So now those, those doors match this one perfectly, and they're part of this wall again. But of course, we need to weld those together now. Oh, and they're not even on the same plane. So let's select all these splines like this. Oops. Select that spline and I'll lock it in. Move it along the the Y axis right there. Let's make sure that spline is lined up too, so everything is on the same plane. then go into the vertex sub-object mode make sure each of these is moved into place properly and then we can weld them together so let's select all those hit shift 2 if you've set that up as a hotkey otherwise just weld them together and test it out by putting that, turning the extrude back on and uh, oh, it did not work. You can see that I'm not getting a solid object there. So let's make sure they're all still selected. Let's turn up our threshold a little bit. Maybe one inch and I think it worked. There we go. Now we can take our extrude from this one, copy it as a right click copy, right click copy, and put it right onto here as well. So they're the same. You can even paste instanced. So if you extrude this one more, the other one extrudes as well. So now you have that whole front wall of the building made by just using spline tools. And our door's the right size now.